Are you born? Vanakkam. I'm Vioni Dimel. This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. President Rajapaksa is in town attending the UN Assembly in New York. Post War Sri Lanka. Progress and challenges according to Rue Freeman. Sri Lanka urging the US to renew the GSP trade concession. Letter from Ambassador Jaliya Vikramasuriya. Green card lottery. Be aware of websites asking money, warns US State Department. President Mahindra Rajapaksa arrived in New York on September 19th to attend the 66th session of the United Nations General Assembly. He will address the United Nations on Friday, September 23rd. President Rajapaksa is scheduled to meet UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon on Saturday, according to the President's media unit. On September 20th, President Rajapaksa attended the annual meeting of the Clinton Global Initiative 2011 at the Sheraton New York Hotel in New York. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's permanent representative Ambassador Dr. Palita Kohona and Deputy Ambassador General Shavendra Silva met with the New York-based Human Rights Watch to address their concerns relating to the last stage of the war against Tamil Tiger terrorists. Human Rights Watch has been pressing for an investigation on the accountability issue and had told the Sri Lankan diplomats that the report of the Secretary General's panel of experts and the Channel 4 documentary was sufficient to begin investigations. Both Ambassador Kohona and Deputy Ambassador Silva had challenged the credibility of panel of experts' report and the Channel 4 documentary and had asked them to watch the documentary film produced by the Sri Lankan government lies agreed upon that refutes the claims made in the Channel 4 documentary. While in New York, Sri Lankan President Rajapaksa has been meeting with many world leaders and other foreign diplomats to brief them on the progress of the post-war Sri Lanka. Boston Lanka spoke to Sri Lanka-born activist and writer Ru Freeman about the post-war developments in Sri Lanka. Uh, Ru, uh, you were in Sri Lanka recently. Uh, could you please share with us what you have observed in Sri Lanka, especially uh, the changes you have seen in the post-war Sri Lanka? Um, well, to begin with, Colombo is vastly different and the other cities are following suit, I think, outside Colombo. It is cleaner, the traffic moves smoothly, people are less bad-tempered about everything. Um, I gather that the government began to implement many of the laws already in the books with regard to urban planning under Gotape, uh, Rajapaksa, and that has made an impact. Uh, for instance, even something as simple as garbage, which was a nightmare for most citizens, there was never a clear idea as to when they would come, uh, and when they did come, they had to be bribed to take garbage away. It's a thing of the past. The trucks come twice a week, more, more even than here in the U.S., and they send someone in advance to let you know that they're on the way. There is no bribery. And uh, if utilities are cut because of a failure to pay a bill, they're reinstated immediately when the bill is pay paid. There is no sort of bureaucratic rigmarole. Um, the walls outside most government buildings, include police stations, have come down uh, also around the National Archives. There is a sense of freedom from fear. I spent a lot of time at Independence Square, which has been transformed into a really beautiful open-air space for people of all ages to just gather together and run or walk or just spend time. And uh, one of those evenings that I was there, actually, Gotabe Rajapaksa was uh, seen taking a walk like anybody else, checking on the surroundings at the event. Outside the city, there is widespread evidence of new construction, both by the government and the people. Um, the new roads, what people call carpet roads, make travel around the island much easier, for instance, in Polonnaru and so on. I also traveled along the coastal route to Pasikuda from Trincomalee, and that was a difficult journey because we were on the roads that had been demined and were now being rebuilt. But rebuilding was evident between lush paddy fields. The railroad, too, which is being laid down, was a sight I had never seen. And of course, the people all over the country seemed to sort of walk a little bit lighter. It is not that they're happy about the numbers who had to die, but they're glad to be rid of fear and suspicion 
people uh, seem to speak openly now. They speak openly about everything. Uh, do you think uh, Sri Lanka has done enough after the war to build reconciliation and also uh, to find a political solution to the grievances of the Tamil community? What the government has done so far with regard to the physical well-being of the IDPs is commendable, as I said before. With respect to the political solution, we have to ask what are the grievances. There are issues of democratic participation, which is a serious issue, but it is not a Tamil issue only. The constitution is slanted to favor the politicians and the rich. Other grievances, such as language-related anomalies, exist. I think the relevant legislation is in place, but implementation has been slow, partly due to the lack of human resources. Things have um, speeded up on this front, and that happened before the war ended. Um, with respect to power devolution, well, more than half the Tamils in the country live outside the north and east. The issue of traditional homelands is more myth than historically viable um, and verifiable. And large swaths of the north and east are not Tamil areas anyway. The concentrations in the eastern province is in a 10-mile wide strip along the coast. The northern province has been ethnically cleaned of Muslims and Sinhalese. I think the current experiment with the 13th Amendment, which gave us the provincial council, uh, has been a monumental failure on all counts, with 67% of the money allocated going just for upkeeping the council. It just led to the sort of proliferation of political strongmen. When the LTT was in power, there was one place uh, alone in the country where there were only Tamil people. Everybody else had been murdered or driven out. Elsewhere in the country, people of all ethnicities and religious beliefs lived and worked together, went to school and shopped together and often married each other. The question became, do we want the rest of the country to look like what the North looked under Prabhakaran, or do we want the North to look like the rest of the country? And I think the answer to that is simple. The communal card is obviously useful for some Tamil politicians and certainly expatriates who uh, have not been in Sri Lanka, were not born there, have not actually lived there. Uh, but have nurtured this uh, idea of war and separatism for much of their lives. And I'm, I think once you do that, it's very hard to let that go. The ground realities, however, work against these kinds of divisive politics. And certainly the people in Sri Lanka uh, that I talked to when I was there and traveling around the island don't support that. I think, though, that uh, the even more important issue is the matter of reconciliation. And not all reconciliation is wrought by con constitutions and laws. Trail, for instance, uh, when Sarindu Nambu and 30,000 people walked from the south to the north to raise money for a pediatric cancer ward in the north, that was an example of how the citizen reviews the end of the war and each other. All through the country, you see increased commerce among regions of goods uh, and services and people. When I was at the Koneswaram Hindu temple in uh, Trinkamali, there were people of all ethnicities and religions meeting with the priests, making their offerings. And those kinds of journeys take place throughout the island now. This wasn't possible 30 years ago. We have several monuments built to commemorate the end of the war, and rightly so at uh, you know, Elephant Pass and Mulativiu and uh, Kirinochi. But I would like to see a memorial along the lines of the Vietnam War Memorial here in the U.S. to acknowledge the futility and human cost of this war, one that carries the names of all those on both sides who died in the name of getting of something that we in a predominantly Buddhist country know not to fight over, land and possession. Um, we are a nation of people who understand the importance of mourning the dead. We go to funerals of people we only know in passing or sometimes not at all. I think it is important to mourn the war dead too. And uh, and I think that if uh, the government uh, tried to do this in a way that uh, allowed us to mourn them together, both Tamils and Sinhalese, we will be able to make a much stronger statement that they were all citizens of one country and that we go forward as one country. Thank you, Ru. Uh, that was Ru Freeman from Pennsylvania. The Sri Lankan ambassador to the United States, Jalia Vikram Surya, in a letter to the U.S. Senate, has urged the United States to renew a key trade concession which remains suspended since late last year. The U.S. generalized system of preference, also known as GSP, is a trade concession given to several countries, including Sri Lanka, by the U.S. government. According to the Ambassador Vikram Surya, imports of products from Sri Lanka to the U.S. have seen a drastic drop since the trade concession was suspended. 
the lack of GSP has caused Sri Lanka to lose top supply positions in products in which it held strong market initiatives. U.S. imports of gold and silver jewellery from Sri Lanka have also taken a hit, with gold jewellery imports to the U.S. from Sri Lanka dropping 26.5 percent, the Sri Lankan External Affairs Ministry said. Sri Lanka and other U.S. GSP beneficiaries say the decrease in imports is causing job losses, economic declines in many industries and regions, and a drop in competitiveness for critically needed investment for the respective countries. A program note. The Boston Villa, the latest video production of Boston Lanka, can be seen on every Thursday on www.bostonlanka.com and on many other Sri Lankan news sites. We invite our viewers to watch the bilingual drama with stories revolving around a multicultural family living in Boston. The online applications can be submitted for the U.S. Green Card Lottery starting from October 4th. Every year, the U.S. Diversity Visa Lottery Program grants 50,000 visas to people around the world. This annual Diversity Visa Program makes visas available to persons meeting simple but strict eligibility requirements. The online applications will be closed on November 5th, 2011. The U.S. Department of State advises the public of a notable increase in scams. According to the State Department, some companies posing as the U.S. government are seeking money in order to complete DV entry forms. There is no charge to download and complete the electronic diversity visa entry form. It is free. Please check Boston Lanka website for more information on how to submit online application free of charge. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.